If you think that buying me this unhappy meal from the cafeteria constitutes a date, you are sorely misguided. A date means that you A, pick take me, me up. up, B, take, take me, me to a five-star five restaurant. restaurant. Clear, clear, royalty approaching. Hello there, whooshy little baby. Ugh, I hate it when people bring their beasts to restaurants. <gasps> Tea, it's like the doggy knows me. Cher, she's not a doggy. She's a purebred dandy Bristol. Isn't that that dog that rescued that dude by dialing 911? That was her first cousin. Look, Dee, he's hugging me. Oh, I've never seen a dog that hugs before. And look, he's smiling. I loved Amber's dog, Tippy. I had to have one exactly like it. Are you out of your mind? A dandy Bristol cost $1,000. $1,000? Are you kidding? Oh, but Daddy, this doggy is so unique. They smile and they hug and they're so gentle and sweet. She could be my friend. Forget it, Cher. But Daddy, ever since I was a little girl, I imagined myself as a teenager doing my homework in my neat room with an adorable dandy Bristol at my feet. The breed didn't exist when you were a little girl, but I like the fantasy about the homework. But Daddy... Cher, this isn't like a jacket or a pair of shoes. This is a living being. It needs to be walked, fed. I'd walk it, I'd feed it, whatever it takes. And scoop it? Ew. I would. I would scoop. My love for this dog would surpass any level of ooness. It's out of the question. I am not spending $1,000 on a dog. Daddy doesn't understand. This is my soulmate dog. I am so riding in the empathy lane with you, Cher. My authorities ennoed my financing for Murray's new car stereo. But after the toppling of the czar, Russia became a communist state with an economic system that, in theory, made everyone equal. See, I could take being equal with Tippy, but with Amber, no way. I can't think of anything but that dog. Hey, that's cute. Cher? Miss Geist? What is that in the right of the picture? I'm glad you asked. That's the hammer and sickle, the symbol. No, below it on the woman's hand. This? It's a muff. Now, class, I know communism is a difficult concept to. Miss Geist, is a muff a purse substitute or a mitten substitute? Uh, probably mittens. Theoretically, this system should have worked. This concept of. Share, make it relevant. If a Russian revolutionary had her hands in her muff, then where did she keep her lipstick and her... Lipstick wasn't a priority in 1917. Russia's share of these people were starving to death. The children weren't educated. They didn't worry about... That muff is so cute. I want one, but with a pocket. Oh, yeah, where are you gonna get one, Russia? I'll make it. It's just a round thing. Communism ultimately failed. <laughs> Duh. They couldn't even get the muff right. So Dee and I set to work. Dee, you're an awesome seamstress. Excuse me, seamstress? No, sure. I'm an artisan. Behold, the muff purse. Ah, now we have a reason to go to school tomorrow. <laughs> Tippy and put her on your hand. Man, she lived a short but happy life. I can tell by the way she wagged her itty bitty little tail. If you would have been paying attention in history, you would know that these are muffs. But with pockets. I think those muffs are vital for protection from the cruel Southern California climate. Yeah. I believe it's going to get down to about 60 tonight. <laughs> oh, I feel a chill. <laughs> it's getting chilly. <gasps> Stop now. What are you wearing? Muff purses. We made them ourselves. Well, I insist that you make me one. This would be absolutely perfect for Tippy's afternoon pate snack and squeaky toy. Well, I don't know. I'll front you the money for fabric and supplies. You can hold Tippy all during P.E. As it turned out, Amber was just the beginning. Thank you. Do I have extra fashion perception or what?
Then it occurred to me, we could start a business making mops. It would be mega profitable. I could earn money for my doggy, and Dion could buy Murray that car stereo. No, definitely no. Cher, what's gotten into you? You are not starting up a business. Why not? I have a killer product. Well, you might know something about fashion. Might. But you don't know the first thing about running a company. I do so. First, you open up a showroom. Sweetheart. And then you hired. You're just a kid. How are you going to handle that? But, Daddy, your client, Betsy Johnson, was just a kid when she opened up her first business. Betsy Johnson was a prodigy. I mean, that's an exception. For every Betsy Johnson, there are 10 humongous failures. But when you hit, it can be huge. Also, opening up a business, it costs money. The money in my bat mitzvah account is just sitting in the bank. It's compounding. Where's that file? You said I could use it as long as it was towards a productive endeavor. Well, productive means a computer, college education, a teen tour of Europe. Is this what you're looking for, Daddy? Oh, thank you, sweetheart. Business is productive. Well, I still don't like it. But if it means that much to you, all right. Thank you, Daddy. How do I look? Do I look businessy, D? Oh, way businessy, sure. Listen, that's our final offer. Take it or leave it. Way firm and not one step over the intimidation line. Precisely the attitude we strive for here at Brad Keanu. Keanu Brad. Remember, we decided Oscars before rock bands? No, I don't think so. I think we decided Blockbuster before anything else. <laughs> but Brad Pitt has a... Oh, hi. May I help you? Great business, E.D. These are darling. Mm, I love this line. Are you the designers? Yes. yes. <laughs> How much do they cost? Oh, $20. $20. A piece? OK, 15 That's our final offer. Take it or leave it. You'll take 12 or I walk. Fine. Fine. Oh, OK, 12. And stylish 24-7, 365. Please, notice the convenient pocket. I don't know. Oh, and a Gore-Tex inner lining to wick away clamminess. Well, I don't think so. <laughs> so, how are sales? Maybe you guys need an infomercial, you know, like, it's mittens, it's a purse, it's a muff purse. Mm. If you promise to leave right now, we promise we won't bother you when you finally get that job making fries. Ooh. T, we have a customer. May I help you? Muffs are gorgeous. Purple leopard, brilliant touch. <laughs> And you had a pocket. Smart. We corrected an obvious flaw in a classic. Hey, who knows better what the kids want than the kids, right? Yeah? Do you want to order some? What's your point? Um, well, they're stylish mm -hmm. yet practical. No, no, no. Your point. Your price point. How much do they cost? Oh, oh, our point is 15. Barry Lipton. I've launched many a young career, and you know what? I'm going to launch yours, because I like you guys. Here's your point. Eight dollars a muff? It's impossible. Not if I order 500 of them. 500? Yeah, what do we do? Let's say uh, 300 of the purple leopard and maybe 200 assorted colors, huh? Got a deal? Yes. I'll need them in two weeks. I like you kids. Thanks. <laughs> Murray, Murray. How does it feel now that your girlfriend is making more money than you? Well, I tell you, man, my masculinity will stay firmly intact because my baby's taking me to Hawaii. Ooh, we go Hawaii. Hawaii. We go Hawaii. No, going Hawaii. you're not going anywhere because it's my business and I'm booking to Paris. No. Guys, chill. Okay. 500 muffs. Plus the 11 we already sold. At one muff an hour, divided by two, Times, four hours after school. That's six hours on the weekends. We should be finished with the order in just three and a half months. $50 a day, plus supplies, plus insurance, plus social security, plus federal and state income tax withholding. Oh, so we'll only lose $500 by next week. Oh, maybe capitalism isn't that superior. 
Maybe we should form a collective. Oh, that's great! We can all be comrades and split the profit. Totally. Okay. Hi. Can I help you? Yes, hello. I was wondering when I could burn. Hey, cut it out. <laughs> hey, hey. Hey, hey. Get your hands off the purple leopard. Look, Tama, I am shop steward. I am in charge of the fabrics. Well, as the designer, I am in charge of what happens to the fabrics. So I say get your inept hands off. Hello, grievance. As union rep, I have to tell you that my people can't work under these conditions. What way? Under what conditions? Your humidifier is clogged. My skin is totally parched. How do you expect us to work like this? Oh, and by the way, the thread isn't strong enough to reinforce the buttonholes, and they keep unraveling. So, someone should fix it. What are you all looking at me like that for? Oh, oh, right. Uh, solution. Zippers instead of buttonholes. That is way CEO in the show. I'll just call our client. You gotta be kidding me. Get this out of here. Hello, Barry? Share. Sure. And to what do I owe this pleasure? Well, we were having some problem with the buttonhole, so we decided to go with zippers. <sighs> Let me tell you a little something about running a business, darling. You don't go changing an item because you're having problems with your little junior achievement project, okay? Look, let's say you are building the Statue of Liberty, and halfway through you decide, oh, this torch is too hard to make, so I'm gonna shove a stick in her hand. Meanwhile, you got the poor and the tired and the hungry coming to America, and all of a sudden they see this woman in the ocean with a stick in her hand. What are they gonna do? They're gonna turn around and they're gonna go home. And you wouldn't want that, would you? No, and I don't want zippers. And furthermore, I don't want to hear about your stupid little problems. Now, if I don't see 12 dozen of the purple leopard with buttons on my desk the day after tomorrow, AM, I'm gonna cancel my whole order. Whoa, he went postal. I'm not making muffs for that man. We don't have to take that. I'm in trouble. What should I do? I bet Betsy Johnson would know. Hi. Hello, Betsy. Hi, this is Cher Horowitz, your lawyer's daughter. Oh, how much is this going to cost me? Oh, oh, no, I just have a little question. See, I'm making these muffs. Oh, a classic. Long overdue for a comeback. I know, and we're doing some in purple. <gasps> Fabulous! Purple leopard. Fabulous squared. But we're having some problems with the thread. Oh, don't worry about that. Just use a three-chord left-hand twist poly and double stitch. Fabulous cubed. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Excuse me. Meal penalty. What? Hello. As representative of the United Muff Makers, I'm here to inform you that at 1,600 hours, we are owed a meal. Stop working. Stop working. Put it down. Stop working. Amber! The law says that we are entitled to it. Oh. was right. I can't do this. No, we will not return to work unless these conditions... Fortunately, Tippy was there to lift my spirits. Thank you, Murray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See you later. But to finish the order, we had to work through the night. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, thanks. I can't believe we are actually done. 
Oh, we finally got them sent off. <gasps> Murray! the ability for the economy to expand. The system became stagnated and ultimately, the entire structure crumbled. I so appreciate all your hard work. Oh, whatever. Hello? Cher, what do you, hate me or something? What kind of crappy months are you sending me? They're falling apart, they're crooked. <laughs> oh, Barry. He just has a few minor suggestions. But I don't have time to redo them by Friday. Redo them by Friday? Uh-uh, I quit. I have been a really good guy, but Barry Nice Nice has left the building. I hope you have a good lawyer. I do, but I don't think I can ask him. Everybody, let's check. No way. I am so over these muffs. Ugh, me too. At 2D. I should have known a collective could not sustain. You know, Cher, it's very late. Please don't be mad. I'm sorry. Sorry? About what? Everything. You were right. Business is way hard. Your friends fight. You have to be totally bossy. You run out of Purple Leopard. And other people are mean and ask you if you know a good lawyer. But at least I know why communism failed. You know, sweetheart, I saw you sinking out there. But you kept your game face up. I was really impressed with your sense of responsibility. But, Daddy, I have nothing but problems. Uh -huh. Well, in this house, how do we deal with problems? We break them down and solve them one by one. That's right. So, start breaking. My friends hate me. I owe everybody money. And Barry wants to sue me. And which one is the worst? My friends. And what do you do about that? Well, I could apologize to them, even though it would be way embarrassing, and tell them all how much I appreciate their work, even Amber. You know, somehow, to me, that seems way smart. So I fully apologized to everybody and invited them to my house for a big barbecue. And Daddy pointed out my little muff purse idea was actually something called intellectual property, which it seems is way valuable. And suddenly I remembered interest had been expressed. And sure enough, done deal. Then my in-house counsel had a conversation with my client. Oh, big bad Barry Lipton, threatening a 15-year-old. I don't care if she's 115. We had a contract, and we had terms, and I'm gonna sue. Oh, yeah? For what? For, for mental anguish, that's what. Well, we'll be sending you a bill. Expect to get one from my office. That's Mel Horowitz and Associates. Mel Horowitz? You're, uh, the, 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 the Mel Horowitz guy? Uh, hey, Barry! We, we have a problem. Uh, all right, hold on. I'll be right there. Hey, look, uh, we got an emergency. I gotta go. I'll, uh, I'll call you back. Oh, Daddy, I'm so glad you're big and scary and intimidating. <laughs> like Brad Cannon and Muff Purse International actually reaped enough profits for a cute dandy Bristol for me and a fully loped-out car stereo for D to buy Murray. Except, at the mall, buying Murray's stereo, I fell in love with someone who really needed me. Meet Brad Kanu Horowitz, and the money I saved on the Dandy Bristol, I donated to the ASPCA. And though I didn't mean to start a trend again, once everyone saw Brad Kanu, they ran to the pound and got one of their own. Dee got an especially looked out poodle for Murray. Oh. 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 Oh.